Good evening. Welcome to the June 22nd, 2021 meeting of the Quantic Township Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the Township Clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with Township policy. And for the record, it was probably my mistake, but it's the June 22nd meeting. Um. <laughs> should, I, should I read through the message? <laughs> <laughs> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. 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 Will the clerk please call the roll? Mrs. Florence Lynch? I'm here. Mr. Hurt? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Phelan is absent. Mayor Russell? Here. Quorum. We have no presentations scheduled for this evening. At this time, are there are any reports or comments from any of the volunteers serving our community? We ask that one person from your committee deliver the report. Any other comments can be made during the public comment section. Randy? <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Randy Shamber, 15 Van Riper Avenue, also proprietor of Shamrock School of Music at 595 North Compton Turnpike. Uh, good to see everyone. Thank you very much. I'm here to report on um, the Social Equity Council uh, uh, progress during Pride Month. Um, again, this council was uh, formed at your recommendation um, earlier this year. And uh, I think we've made great strides um, just in the sh short few months we've had. So uh, these are some of the things we've accomplished this month. Um, and of course, at any time when I'm finished reading them, you can ask any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, at uh, Quantic High School, the Gay Straight Alliance, there was a meeting on June 16th. Propel presented its mission to make Pequannock Township a more welcoming place for all to the Gay Straight Alliance membership. Everyone in attendance read aloud the Town Council Proclamation declaring June as Pride Month. So again, thank you for doing that. Uh, the Municipal uh, Building Parking Display for the month of June uh, looks beautiful out there. Thank you again for approving that at the last meeting. Um, the Pride Flags were placed around the planted area in the Municipal Building Parking Lot on Sunday, June 13th. I was in attendance, although it was uh, raining slightly, it did not damper our spirits. Uh, they're maintained daily by Propel members so that they uh, are, can be seen and they're neat and clean. Um, and we will leave them there until the end of the month. Uh, again, special thanks to our township manager, Brewer, for his assistance uh, in contacting Pastor Kathleen at uh, First Reformed Church. Uh, Chilton Medical Center, um, on June 4th, uh, Social Equity Council member, Bella Basile, uh, presented the Pequannock Township Pride Month Proclamation at the Pride Flag <laughs> Rising Ceremony. She is a representative from the high school, a sophomore rising junior. Um, we had a Pride Lawn Flag Program, which all of you got your Pride Flags. I hope that you've uh, displayed them uh, at your homes. We've distributed more than a hundred of them throughout the community, and uh, uh, I think they can be seen on a very hundred Again, in a town of even a small size like this, doesn't make a huge impact, so maybe next year we can get more participating, but 100 uh, were welcomed. Um, our welcoming pride for the month of June, this is a, uh, an initiative to work with the businesses in town. Um, as of today, we now have 84 businesses that have accepted the clings that go on their front door, which is a, a rainbow or a heart that shows the pride colors, saying that they're welcoming uh, the LGBT community and all into their business. Um, and we will continue to distribute those through the month of June. 
Uh, we have a broad, uh, Pride Book program for the month of June, which have been coordinated with our school librarians. Propel Pequannock members are donating age-appropriate Pride Books to township schools. So far, 40 books have been donated, and more are coming in every day. Uh, and then just today, um, as a parishioner of Our Lady of Good Counsel, I have asked them to participate in Pride Month. This weekend they will be saying a prayer of, in their intentions for the LGBTQ plus community, and in particular uh, the youth of that group. Um, so that's what we've accomplished so far. Um, any questions or comments from the town council? You did a great job. Thank you. Uh, I do want to present one more thing to the town council. Uh, this is a pride flag, which is uh, suitable for flying on the flagpole out in front of town hall. Uh, it's 6 by 10, which we believe is the appropriate size. We would like to donate this to the town. And I would like to propose that if you would like to raise it for this weekend, um, we would love to help and participate in a ceremony. I'm proposing Friday at noon for the weekend. Any time would be great, but I'm going to present this to the town in, in hopes that you're able to do that for this weekend. And that is my report. Thank Anything? you, Randy. All right, good. Thank you. The next item on our the next item on our agenda is public comments. The public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period for public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are requested to limit their questions and comments to three minutes. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized to come to the microphone and provide your name and address for the record. Good evening, Joseph Scrivala, 16 Prospect Avenue. Um, I was here last month when we presented our petition about the parking situation from Tavern 5, and I'm here just basically as a follow-up to see if any progress has been made on that parking situation. Yes, please. Uh, yes, so there was an inspection conducted by the zoning officer, and there was a determination made that there were an excessive number of tables, and a corresponding notice of violation was issued. So that will be followed up on for compliance and escalating enforcement action if there isn't compliance. Uh, specifically, there was also significant attention given to the safety concerns identified because of the intersections and the parking dynamic along the North Pompton Turnpike. You may notice white paint uh, on the curbs and in the area. There were a number of areas identified that either because of proximity to an intersection, stop sign, or uh, bus stop, or crosswalk that there needs to be paint. Uh, in yellow paint and a no parking zone identified. So that paint was ordered and the dots were identified with the municipal engineer's office. The police department also did proactive enforcement, initiated uh, warnings in the beginning, and then have issued summonses thereafter for parking violations. Okay. It, because the turnpike is a county road, will that work be done by the county or by the township? Township. Okay. Um, I did, you know, in doing my homework, I did do a follow-up. I did make an OPA request requesting documentation from Tavern 5 for parking and employees and things. And only late this afternoon did I actually receive information from the town, but actually they gave me information on the site plan for Gillies, which I don't believe is probably updated. That's the existing approval. That is existing, okay. Correct. Because this says, one, I do recall from the meeting last month, I believe you mentioned 144 seats and 51 parking spots. This site plan only says 100 seats and 51 parking spots. Um, as a follow-up, and maybe the work has been done by the town, but two residents from the area that are concerned, one went on a Thursday night, one went on a Friday night, um, and they both counted 243 seats. Right, and a notice of violation was issued, and yes. there's, there's follow-up on On Sunday morning, I rode my bike over there, and actually, I only count 34 usable parking spots. Uh, there actually are three handicap spots, which would make it 37, but there are three spots for the adjacent building at uh, 724, which are 
marked reserved and they're coned off and there were vehicles parked there. So it seems that, I mean, at 233 with the formula that they used, there's severely inadequate uh, parking there. And, and the numbers vary. The numbers I reported at the prior meeting were consistent with what was approved at the 2018 mm -hmm. um, outdoor seating, which is a component of the township's ordinance that allows for, they call it cafe seating. Mm -hmm. So that included that. But the, the notice of violation, I don't have the notice with me. I don't know if the number is 244 or 248, whatever that number may be, or 144 or 148, whatever that number may be. But that's the number that's being enforced by the zoning officer. Okay. Uh, when, do you know when that happened? When that the notice violation of was issued? The notice of violation was issued, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. There'll be a follow up inspection to determine okay. if there's compliance well, or not, the, and then the summons. If on Friday case. evening passed, uh, somebody counted 243 seats. So it's still an ongoing issue. Correct. And unfortunately, as I often say to people on the telephone, and, and this isn't meant to be flip, I would love to have a magic wand of compliance that every time we wrote a notice of violation, it just worked. Sure. But that's not, it, not the way it works, and we have escalating procedures that we use standardized, and we'll, 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 we'll move forward. I, I believe the follow-up inspection is this week if it hasn't happened already. Okay. Just petitioning to the council, you know, as, uh, as stewards for the town, you know, that this is an issue, and it, it does it, some resolution needs to happen. We don't want them to close or anything else like that, but just we need to fix the parking. But as far as a long-term situation, um, to me, LA seems to be the best situation. If they don't have, if they're getting cited for too many seats, still the parking is an issue. I mean, I don't know if there's a work group that could come together to come up with some kind of plan, or is it incumbent on the restaurant to resolve the situation? So the parameters that the municipality can operate in is compelling them to operate within their approvals. How they do that or what they do to do other things is, is up to them. So we don't have the ability to compel them to do valet seating. I don't disagree with you. That would be a great solution. But we can't make that happen. Okay. And there's, the other issue is, if you talk about the scene, there's only 37 parking spots available. I'll, I'll, de I'll defer to the zoning officer and the enforcement folks to follow up based on their inspections. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Is, is that because of the tent that's the, is the tent still up on the side? Or? Well, the, on the plan that I have from Gillies, there are three spots that look like they are now permanently dedicated to the adjacent building. Okay. And there, there's three spots that are handicap access only. Uh, there's a dumpster taking up a spot or two, and then there's also the tent. So, I mean, I, I'm in favor of the outdoor dining, but if you're losing parking spots, you've got to be able to compensate for it no matter what. You know, I was going to wait and talk about it later, but I actually went and counted, and it looks like if they weren't there before, it looks like there could be six spots for the tent. The plan that I yeah, have we, from Gilly shows six spots. Yeah. Right. And so the tent is taking up six spots. Correct. Right. But we allowed yeah. the tents. Right. You know, right, but um, that, was, that was to replace indoor seating right, that correct. you knew of, and then you lose losing right. the parking, so now but, uh, they were at full capacity. I believe they leased, somebody else, somebody else gave them permission to park in their lot also? Right. That was consistent with the 2018 approval. Right, so they have more spots than is shown. You have the old Gillies one? I have the old Gillies one, which only shows, it says 51, but I only count 50, I've counted it right. three or four times. Yeah, so they, they have somebody else's area, too, they have permission to use? Yeah, there was That discussion. was for their employees only, is my understanding, but... Uh, if the ordinance requires them to have 51 spots, they, I think they should have to have 51 spots. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. Kathy Scrabala, 16 Prospect Ave, Compton Plains. Um, Thank you for all the consideration and, and trying to work through, you know, the parking situation. I think we can all agree that Pompton Plains, Baquanic, you know, are beautiful towns. Just riding our bicycles, there's real pride in ownership, um, you know, and we've talked about the safety concerns, um, you know, we've talked about the concerns with cars, people eating, drinking, driving up and down the streets, turning around, um, you know, and obviously even if Tavern 5 was to go to the 144 that they're supposed to be approved for and they have the 51 spots, it's still going to be an issue and Prospect Ave is the closest parking area for people, although I know that you've um, said that the, the Chase Bank has been designated for parking after 5 o'clock. There's certainly commercial parking um, farther down the turnpike, but people don't want to walk. 
So um, whenever there's a problem, I always like to try and present a solution, not just come to you guys and say, figure this out. So in doing some research, in 2003, the city of Pasadena, I guess, also had an issue with parking. And they had a study done, you know, very similar, unex you know, expected um, results, including the valley parking. Um, but one of the things that they also suggested was something called um, pref preferential residential parking zones. So designating a certain area as parking for residents and their visitors. So I'm wondering if the council, you know, so not taking any business away from Tavern 5, just really wanting them to park in areas that are more meant for commercial, if you would consider designating certain roads that are around Tavern 5 as preferential residential on certain evenings between certain town, uh, times, so like a Wednesday through a Saturday from 5 to 10 p.m., so that parking on those streets are really just for the residents and their guests or their visitors. Um, you know, Prospect, Dale, Lockwood, uh, Woodland, you know, Windsor, no, not Windsor, um, Winfield. Okay. Winfield, thank you. Um, so, again, you know, it's not going to be um, a fix for the excess parking, but you know, people could go down to the Chase Bank and park there. They could park farther down the turnpike where it is commercial instead of parking on the residential streets. So I just wanted to ask the council to maybe consider doing something like this. And, um, you know, I think it, the residents on these residential streets would be very appreciative of that. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Is there anyone else at this time? There being no additional public comments, we will continue on with the agenda. The next item on our agenda is the manager's report. Mr. Brewer? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple items from the last meeting. First item is the uh, rainbow pride flags out in front of Town Hall. I'm just going to defer to Mr. Shamber's report. I think he covered that pretty well. Um, with respect to Citizen of the Year at the last council meeting, I was directed to meet with the uh, folks associated with that, whether the American Legion or otherwise. I attempted to schedule a meeting and was unsuccessful. I've shared the correspondence with the governing body associated with that effort. Uh, this evening you have a new ordinance addressing the state law on cannabis for the council's consideration. Mr. Ustank has been prepared with any questions that may be presented with respect to that item. Um, with respect to the American Rescue Plan, so we all heard about this money and there was lots of news and everything else and I just couldn't resist sharing with council some of the things that were thrown our way that we had to do including an application to the state of New Jersey and a number of other things. Um, but on a positive note, I was told uh, by the finance department today that our first tranche or first payment of the 50% of the money is expected on June 23rd or tomorrow. Huh. So we'll see, if it, in fact, we'll see if, in fact, it's wired. Um, that, that amount is $783,182.46. Uh, the total amount is $1,566,336.50. One, $1, which, if anybody paid attention to the prior reports, is a different number. Yeah. Amazing how that It's happens. a higher number, so it's yeah, a good thing. That's good. <laughs> Don't get too excited all at once, though, because we're still <laughs> trying to figure out what we may or may not be allowed to use the money yeah. for. So, once we receive the money, there will be some discussion associated with lost revenue due to COVID-19. Um, we may need to do something with the budget in 21, but that will be a forthcoming discussion item once we have a better idea of what we're yeah, I've been in on these meetings. They're, they're all over the place. I think dynamic is a kind word. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's all over the place. But the good news is we hope to receive the money uh, uh, tomorrow, the first half. And then the second half of the benefit of the audience is supposed to come in 2022. And just so everybody's aware, we can't just say, here, let's reduce taxes. It's very limited what we can do. It's actually, we're. By federal law, we're prohibited from we're using prohibited it for from property using tax it to lower taxes. Which oh, those strings that are attached. Which would that just be easy? <laughs> Wouldn't it? Do you, do uh, you think prohibited. that uh, by the time we get our second check, we'll know what we can use spend it, it on or use it for, it. or is it just going to sit there and accumulate interest, which is okay with me? If we get our second check. Yeah, I, I 
Presumably, we'll have some guidance with respect to what we need to do for 21. Right. Um, I have, of course, my druthers of how I would like to approach it, um, and that will be, we'll discuss with the council. We'll make sure it's something that we're allowed to do. But you know, some of the challenges are you're, you're allowed to use it for uh, inhibition of revenue generation but you're not allowed to use it for some other things. So can you then wheel it through the budget as a revenue and then put it in? And so that there's a lot of, of second and third and fourth layer questions that nobody has really addressed. And although the federal law precludes state law from adding extra requirements, the state has added extra requirements. Yes, they have. And the state is mandating that if there were special emergencies associated with the COVID-19 dynamic, that be satisfied first. And then okay. there's a number of different ways to do that. So it seems like a simple concept when you involve three levels of government and trillions of dollars gets pretty complicated. That's why we have you, Mr. Brewer. That's why we have a wonderful Navigate team, it. Mr. Brewer. <laughs> it's certainly not solely up to me. Please don't think that. Um, and then the last item in my report, uh, we've talked about water quality for a long time. We had the 2021 lead and copper sampling. We have to do this twice a year. One of 60 homes exceeded the 15 parts per billion. No action is necessary. It is a home that has failed in the past. Uh, it is believed to be an internal plumbing issue. Uh, the homeowner is okay with it. Um, as of right now, we are not required any further action. Uh, and we had to establish a corrosion control plan. In prior discussions, there was discussion of how that had to be implemented. Because we've not had any exceedances, again, that required notification, the DEP has issued us a stay on that. They said you have to come up with the plan, you have to have it ready to go, but you do not have to implement it right now. Unless there's any questions, that's my report. No questions? No. Next on the agenda, public hearing on ordinance number 2021-12. Ms. Marsh. Ordinance number 2021-12 is an ordinance authorizing the sale of certain property owned by the Township of Quantic. That's Block 4606, Lot 2. Not required for public purposes, pursuant to NJSA 48-12-13 at sequence. Are there any comments from the council? No. No. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make that motion to open the public hearing. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 If anyone in the audience has questions or comments on this ordinance, please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record, please. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance 2021-12. A second? A second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Lawrence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mayor Russell? Yes. Next on the agenda is the intro introduction of ordinances. Ms. Marsh? For the council's consideration is ordinance number 2021-13. An ordinance to amend Chapter 360 zoning of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Aquanic to prohibit certain classes of cannabis establishments as uses within the Township and limit and regulate cannabis cultivation establishments as conditional uses and to establish a cannabis transfer tax within the Township. Mr. Brewer, any comments? Um, sure. Um, Bob, if you want to jump in, you're welcome to. So previously there had been an ordinance introduced and carried for a couple of public hearings by the Township Council prohibiting all elements of cannabis established uh, with the new state statute, giving uh, local decisions with a time frame of either August 21st or August 22nd act. Following some discussion and some direction, there was a revision to that ordinance. Um, in summary, the substantive difference is the allowance of the cultivation of marijuana, but the prohibition of the wholesale or retail sale of it uh, and the manufacturing. So the current ordinance is different in that regard. It also includes the tax, which is allowable under state statute, and corresponding procedures required for the remuneration of that tax. I think that covers it. Unless there's anything? questions, I, I don't. I think it's a, it is a little bit longer and, of course, more complicated than the original because once we permitted it, right, we, we had to, to figure out it. ways to regulate it. Yeah. So um, I have a question, yeah. Bob. Sure. About, about the fencing. Yeah. It says, all structures used for cultivating of cannabis shall be enclosed by a chain link fence. Right. That is at least seven feet high. So is that a chain link fence going around the building? Yeah. Or is that a chain link fence going around the property? No, it's actually a good question. And it is the building, and I believe it is also going to be part of what the state requires, 
it can't, it, if it were to go around the entire property, that would be, first of all, probably the flood zone, which would be problematic. Um, and second of all, it might be un, unnecessarily unsightly. So the facility itself has to be uh, by fence protected, but not the entire property. I thought they talked about that years ago. Yeah, I thought there was a requirement years ago that because there is it is in you know, a residential. I mean, it borders residential property. I'm, it'll have to be adequately fenced to deal with security and certainly to meet any state requirements. But the problem with putting it around the whole property is there's certain areas in that property that are wetlands and other things that it, you wouldn't be able to have a fence at that at that height. So. Because I was going to say instead of a chain link fence, I mean, if it was to protect the residents. I would rather see a vinyl fence because I, if I, I live there and I saw it, I would I really wouldn't want to see it. I'd rather see it. Chain link maybe for security. That may be why the state does. We can certainly look at that, and that's something that the uh, you know, planning board can look at. When it gets so, is there going to be any type of buffer that surrounds the property from the residential area? Buffer? Well, we, there's certainly setbacks that prevent that that protect it from the residential area, um, and those we do not have a requirement in here that the setbacks have, you know, plantings and buffering, but that would be something that certainly can be discussed by the planning board when they do site plan review okay. because it be required. We wouldn't, I don't think we would do that here. That's sort of a planning board. Okay. Thing to, yeah, yeah, as so. long as that gets addressed. Mm-hmm. Great place for the night. And the planning board has to approve this before August. The ordinance, yes. The planning board needs to. What the planning board needs to do is to, to uh, advise us if the ordinance is consistent with the master plan, um, which it, it pretty much is going to be consistent with the master plan because this was a use that prior to this point was never even permitted. So there's no way that it, by, it violates right. the master plan. But technically, yes, it does go to the planning board for review before we have to adopt. And, and the new master plan does contemplate an agricultural zone. Eliminating the industrial and residential pre yeah, pre which is, conformities which exist throughout the yeah, community. We, we haven't done that here, um, eliminated the industrial zone, but we will be, that'll be coming. The only reason I ask is because that last night's planning board meeting, there was nothing on the agenda for the next meeting, so we weren't planning on having a meeting. Yeah, you don't need uh, the, the only thing was an approval of a resolution. Okay. We were going to do that Zoom if it was going to be allowed, so someone may want to reach out, but we're going to have to. We're we won't need a meeting. I think this is a pretty light lift reviewing an ordinance like this, but yeah, we will technically need yeah. it done. Or not done. If the, if the board chooses to wait the 30 days, then I don't know when we have, when do we have the schedule for adoption? I think at our July meeting. July 13th. Yeah. July 13th. We only have for public yeah. hearing. Yeah, for public hearing, so we really need them to do it before. And then, and then potential day. action in August. Yeah, because yeah, we're just so. Public knows we're only meeting one time in July and one time in August. Something new for council? The August meeting is in time. Right. right. Okay. So if there's a public hearing held on July. Just let the planning board know. Yeah. And this is if they're just approving our resolution, well, they yeah. could still do that for us. Yeah. Right. If they wanted to. Oh, so yes. I'm like sorry. Said, we're not. The hearing is in August. Oh, the hearing is right. in August. Um, yeah, um, that's a question. Do you want the hearing in July or August? I think if it's if we have the time to do it in July, that would probably be prudent. Depending upon the response of the planning board. It's three yeah. weeks, so yeah. Okay, that's fine. I have no other questions. Anybody I'll, else? I'll bring it up at the planning. I'm good. No. Is there a motion to introduce this ordinance on first reading? I'll make a motion to introduce ordinance number twenty twenty one dash thirteen. Second. I'll second it. Roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mayor Russell? Yes. The next agenda item is resolutions. Ms. Marsh. Beginning with resolution R2021-152, approving the renewal of the designated alcoholic beverage control licenses. 2021-153, authorizing the municipal grant application for the fiscal year 2022. R2021-154, approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the West Parkway Sunset to Van Dyke project. 2021-155, authorizing change order number one, a reduction of cost for the annual road resurfacing improvement project to a revised amount of $283,980.01. 2021-156, 
authorizing the acceptance of a hold harmless agreement from Mark Orovio for Block 2902, Lot 16, which is 26 months in drive. 2021-157, authorizing the discretionary award of a contract for three 15-yard hook lift containers to Thompson Fabricating, Fabricating Incorporated in an amount of $18,925. 2021-158, authorizing release of designated escrow deposits, and 2021-159, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the June 18th, 2021 bill list. Thank you. Are there any comments from on the resolutions from the council? I guess it's yep. hook lift containers, like the garbage container that you can put on this new truck and take off and... Correct. Right. The capital budget called for the acquisition of two for $20,000. Works department shop. Well, got three for you. We got three for under the price. Good. Yes. Great job. Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll you make a motion. Go ahead, Brian. Get it. All right. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution R2021 152 through R2021 159. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. I'm very happy to see that the uh, Roof of the surface and came in a lower. Mayor Russell. Yes. There are no items listed for discussions, and there are no reports and notices. Notices. The next agenda, the next item on our agenda is council reports and announcements. Councilwoman Florence Lynch. Uh, yes, I just have a couple of things. The first thing I wanted to bring up um, was at last month's meeting. Uh, the council voted down resolution 2021-144. Um, I wanted to bring that up again because after, you know, thinking about it and, and really reading the um, resolution and, and talking to some people, I, I was thinking we were taking something away. We're not. This is just clarifying what's already in existence. So it's not changing anything, but it's letting the establishment know that, um, you know, it's just making them mindful that they still have to go through uh, certain procedures. I think anything that we can do to help that parking situation, I went over there, I, I looked at the spots. I'd like to bring this up again um, for a vote because I think it just helps clarify what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and I wanted to um, see if we can reconsider it. So, uh, obviously, there's no resolution present now. If the council would direct, if, if the council wants to see something um, happen. What I don't understand is if it doesn't do anything, well, it's clarifying. But we have. We sent out the notice of violations. Right. We, we sent out, they're starting to give violations. Well, that's true. I'm, I hoping, just, I'm hoping that once the, the people are getting violations for parking where they're not supposed to, that that that'll encourage the restaurant to maybe yeah. go ahead and and figure something out maybe do the valet or do yeah I, 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 they got the notice of the violations right no i i understand that i just think that it's clarifying um information to them and it's just saying we just want you know to make sure that you know you know that just because of the outdoor seating you can't you know um, exceed the prior limitations, and I just think that by clarifying it, it's we should have adopted it. That that's just my feeling. So I guess my question would be, Mr. Ustak, is it do, do we have to? I mean, legally, do we have to clarify it? Clarify? I mean, would it help us no. clarifying it? We we don't have to. The yeah. idea was it was to. Help. It was to help clarify. We do not have to. You don't have to, but it's helpful. I have no problem going through it again. So if you don't have a problem going through it again, I'd like to go through it again. That was my my point. So, so, the so if, if the council wants to direct that the resolution be prepared for a future agenda, I'll, I'll of course follow the direction of council, but I need, mm -hmm. I need direction. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like it just as it stands, just for clarification. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. We can go through it again. Just for clarification, it always helps. We're having an issue with one we're having, party, we're having, right. but just to make sure that everybody understands, that's I'm okay with that. It's up to you guys. Doesn't matter to me. I mean, you know, 
my gut feeling is it should have been passed the first time that we were Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. But we're here, so yeah. we can put it through again. Yep. Well, that was my feeling, so I'm yeah. stepping up to the plate to say, hey, I'm, you know, I was just, the one is, that, did, is that three? Yeah. I, I just want to make yeah. sure. Yeah. I think is that four? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the direction okay. from council just to confirm is that the resolution be prepared for the future agenda. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Put it this way. It's not going to hurt. No. It's so. not going to hurt. Anything else? Um, other than that, I just had um, my economic development committee is meeting tomorrow um, at 7.30. Um, I haven't met in a while, but tomorrow they were meeting. Uh, what else do I have? I just wanted to say congratulations to all the graduates from uh, from the eighth grade and from the high school. We went to the graduation, and uh, you know, just it was a rough year for everybody, but they all looked happy. And congratulations to everybody, and uh, good luck in your future endeavors. And we went to two Eagle uh, Scouts uh, ceremonies this past. What was it last week? <laughs> um, and uh, they were brothers, um, the Robies. Robies, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, the one brother, uh, Jacob, did the fire hydrant restoration project in the town. And the other one was, uh, oh gosh, what's his first name? I just forgot the, uh, Andrew, was it? Oh, his brother, I'm sorry. Um, Edward. He did, Edward. He did the beautifying at the PV Park entrance and uh, did a really nice job with that. So we were glad to be there. It was nice, and yeah. Senator Carrado was there, and yeah. Sheriff Gana was there, so it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was a really nice event. But that's it. That's all I had. Thank you. Councilman Hurd? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first thing I have is uh, First Aid Squad. They have three new cadets, Tyler Denton, James Sass, and Gina Bellotti, and one new member. I'm going to mess this uh, name up. I am sorry. Lamaya Raji, uh, who is already an EMT. Uh, all three cadets. Cadets, <laughs> candidates receive CPR and first aid training. Uh, in May, they had 54 calls. Calls of Cedar Crest remained stable at about 12, which was great. As I said before, they were at the uh, 5K, uh, but they were also at the graduation, and we uh, really appreciate it. They uh, uh, were supporting the fire department at the castle. There was a little incident over there, and they still need people. So if anybody would be would like to give back to the community and would like to be on First Aid Squad, uh, hey, we could use you. We need your help. So that's for that. Again, I want to echo what Melissa said. Uh, congratulations on PV 8th grade graduation. And I have to give a personal shout out to my son Riley. He graduated 8th grade. He made it. Good for you. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, congratulations to the high school uh, as well. Um, Oh, and Little League. So Little League, we, we did our finals, and my other son won. His team won the Golden Bolts. They won the entire thing, first place. Congratulations, Golden Bolts. That's excellent, and uh, great job there, Herd Boys. Uh, what else do we have? Got the water report. Looks good. I like that uh, we don't have an issue. That's very good. And that is all I have. Thank you very much. Councilman Paul. Uh, com uh, fire Company 2 met on the 10th of June. I went over uh, what their, what we approved in the budget for them uh, since uh, they've been asking you know, the last couple months and I didn't want to say anything because it wasn't finally approved. And then at the meeting before, they sort of caught me off guard so I did not have that material handy. So uh, Mr. Brewer, uh, made sure that I had all the correct information. I presented what was approved uh, in the budget for them. Uh, like everyone said, congratulations to PV School 8th graders and the Quantic Township High School seniors. It was a trying year for everyone, but you know both ceremonies were very nicely done and uh, the weather was great. So uh, I like having the 8th grade one outside because you're roasting yeah. inside that PV School gym. So I hope they keep it outside. So uh, that's all I have. Thank you. That's great. Um, I don't have much. The library, uh, no masks for vaccinated people. They just started that, which is nice. Um, Roby Boys Eagle Scout, very well attended, as Melissa said. The graduations were nice. Um, huge shout out to uh, the Noctaves and the jazz yeah. band. The Noctaves, we were sitting right next to them. They're Her amazing. Like, you could really hear them. They're yeah. harmonizing. They did a good job. And 
and, sure, and Mr. Chamber may have a little something to do with that. I don't know if you saw, but on, uh, on Facebook, they pre-recorded the national anthem at the high school oh, baseball field. Oh, they played at Yankee Stadium. They played at a Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Wow, that's, yeah, that's this, awesome. On Father's Day, I think. Yeah. Great job. Very talented. Very talented group. And that's all I have. Next on the agenda is public comment. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized to come to the microphone and provide your name and address for the record. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Robert Mott. Um, my better half back there. <laughs> say something wrong. If I say something wrong, she's gonna yell. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> we lived in town close to 30 years. We're on Prospect Ave, number six. Um, thorn in the side with you guys, the parking situation. We realized that. Um, it's a beautiful tired. front porch. Sit out tight at night. Adult beverages, whatever you want to have. And we see people up and down the street that we don't know. Um, it's, it's, I just hope that you guys really look into the park. We moved here for a better life. It's a beautiful street. It was, anyway. Um, moved from Patterson, you know, see cars in front of your house forever. We were, we were you know, from Patterson. I just hope it gets better. Uh, we're seriously thinking about moving because of the issues. Um, it's just not right. The guy's got to try to do something about his people. It's not shouldn't be our responsibility to put up with the people in front of our homes. Robert, all I have to say. How many houses in are you? Two. Two from the corner. There's the physical therapist. There's a little red house. Our neighbors, and then we're the oh, I guess I guess would be three in. I think we're right over across the, from the dailies. Yeah. yeah. I've been going over the last couple of nights that they've been having their thing, and it's it's tight. Yeah. It's it's tight. On I came home today around two thirty. I drive a full size Chevy, a Chevy a Silverado. And I had a hell of a time getting yeah. in my driveway. Yeah. And if I decide, I have a little rowboat. Uh, if I take it out, i got to go early because I'll yeah. never get out of there this, this, this time of day. Well, we are working on it. We are, yeah. We're throwing everything at it, and we're moving as fast as municipalities can. Yeah. Whatever we can do is, is definitely appreciated. I hope you guys don't think we're not doing anything because we are. Like you said, right away we got those curbs marked. And there was yeah. a, there's a yeah. lot of parking spaces that they can no longer park at there. Prospect is a tight street. Yes. Um, all, the, all, the, all that yellow marks do is just move the people, they corral the people down the street. Well, and that's what that's we said when people happen. are saying, no no parking, where are they going to go? Yeah. They're going to go more so. But we can't do, you know, it's like a catch-22. The no parking, um, it's and tough. I do like that residential yeah, special that's, that's consideration. That's, that can, that's yeah. something we can do. That, we that have was to look, but, but how is that? Do they have a permit when they come? No. They give their friends. The only permits. way I've ever seen it done in New Jersey is with a permitting system. You Otherwise, know, how would the police ever then, enforce that? How would you know? Who's yeah. So, resident? what are the yeah. police going to do? Knock on the door and say, "Is this your friend?" And what if somebody? So the friend this, part isn't going to work. Right. Yeah. It would have to be a rent. I've been in other cities resident where only, they have uh, which means uh, when they have public parties, uh, private parking only, resident parking only by permit. But, uh, right. But then when someone like, has a party, they. Or it's a tough one. It's, people it's over tough. for Christmas. We, you know, we're happy that the restaurant's there. We're happy it got a good business. But like I said, he shouldn't be inconveniencing us. So. Well, everybody. I hope he, he knows that. But. Well, I mean, the good thing about our town, our, our business community is really good I, I, across the boards. And for the most part, they're all very good stewards. They understand their responsibility to be a good steward to the town. So I do believe it will get figured out. And it's going to be a combination of us setting the ground rules, and that's everything from what we talked about before to um, painting the streets to them being good stewards. And if that means a shuttle bus or ballet or whatever that even looks like, I don't know. But even if they limited the times or something, you know, anything, you know, it's anything, anything well, at all. Well, you know, time has changed too, which is, which is a bummer, yeah. right? So a lot of people do show up with one person in the car, they meet their friend there. I mean, it, it's always happened, but it seems yeah. like it happens more now, you know, instead of everybody getting into a car and going. But and we'll, once we'll in a while, the DFW in. has a uh, their their bash baseball sign and stuff. There was a party there, like a, they, they rent their hole out too if they can. Yeah, they really do hope they can because they yeah. they need the help. Um, 
When they have that, forget about it. It's it's really really yeah. a fiasco. Yeah, there's no parking. <laughs> when both yeah, there's, there's, there's nuts. Nuts. Yeah. and then you know that's what it's it goes through too. So what if the American mm -hmm. Legion has people? So it's yeah. It's well, again, if if it's they tough. can, it's tough. It's tough. We're really going to have to see. Hope, I'm really hoping that this crackdown works and encourages them. Be nice if do, do they. Do they have a deal with the people across the street, the, the dentist or somebody? Uh, physical talk? therapist? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you know what I was going to ask Adam? I know we said we can't make them do certain things, but is there like su like suggestions? And, Broker? You know, they're, they're, and, no, but like maybe, uh, you know, put it, you know, a suggestion with one of the business, like like we're saying, oh, park at Chase or park at physical therapy or park or at maybe they Chess. Can rent the and, and, they and, they, and, they, and, and just them. for the benefit of everybody watching this or here, you know, they, there are specific official actions we can take, but that doesn't mean there aren't conversations. Right, there. right. There's right. conversations. And there are conversations have. from the staff, the enforcement staff, and zoning about right. ideas and discussions. Good. So there are there is a discussion Good. happening. Good. The challenge, and what I saw, to, I think you were at the meeting a couple of meetings ago. The challenge I wanted to educate everybody about was there are just limits on what we can do. Right. And as much as it would be nice to say you have to do this and you need to do that, there are there are limits that we have to work within. So that's that's some of the challenges that you know you think the governing body with the legislative authority, my office with operations, we can kind of just fix most things. It's frustrating at times. I think but eventually we'll they'll the, the business yeah. themselves yeah. will talk to people. Yeah. And, and well, people, out. yeah, people are going to be annoyed if if the business has a bunch of residents coming up to it They're and be being sick. angry. It's their responsibility to be good stewards for our community. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Next on the agenda is minutes for approval. Uh, May 11th, May 25th, 2021 regular meeting and May 24th, 2021 special meeting. Are there any comments on these minutes? No. Nope. Is nope. there a motion to approve these minutes? I'll make a motion to approve all three dates. I, I know May 11th, May 25th, and May 24th. May 24th. May 24th. I, I bring them at home and I forgot to bring them. <laughs> is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next on the agenda is a closed session discussion. Is there a motion to approve Resolution 2021-160 authorizing the Township Council to meet in executive session to discuss matters of attorney-client privilege? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. At this time, the public portion of the meeting is recessed for the closed session.